Because the Earth is kind of roundish, the only really accurate way to represent the Earth is with a globe. Of course, the problem with the globe is that it's kind of impractical. It doesn't fit in your pocket, you can't fold it up. And the spherical coordinates that you need to use when you're working with the globe are sort of non-intuitive. They're hard to work with. So that what we really want is something that we can fold up like a map, and we also want coordinates that are easier to work with. So in order to do this, we need to commit what's called a map projection. A map projection is essentially a, a translation of the coordinates and locations from their places in the real world, on the globe or on, on the Earth, to a flat surface. The problem is that you can't really translate a 3D object to a 2D surface without some kind of sort distortion. Uh, and I've tried this many times with my students, it can get quite messy. Uh, but to make the point more clearly, let's look at a real globe, well at least a virtual globe, to look at the properties of latitude and longitude lines to see how they're supposed to behave on a globe. So here we're looking at Google Earth, uh, which is a really convenient uh, tool for illustrating the point. So this globe has the graticule of latitude and longitude lines, so we can see the equator and we can see both the parallels of latitude and the meridians of longitude. So there's our equator again, and we turn the world a little bit, and we're looking at the prime meridian. But what I want you to notice is the relationship between the parallels and the meridians on this globe. So first off, you'll notice that the lines of latitude stay parallel to one another. They're not going to intersect. They do, however, intersect with the meridians. And in fact, wherever you look on the globe, what's interesting is that the meridians and the parallels always intersect at right angles. And that's important. Lastly, notice that the meridians, the lines of longitude, converge toward the pole. Right? Now what this means is that the lines of longitude, the meridians, are at their widest near the equator. But as we move to a higher latitude, whether north or south, and approach the poles, you'll notice that those lines of longitude, those meridians, get closer and closer to one another until they get reach the pole where they essentially they the distance between them shrinks to zero okay so keep that in mind the parallels stay parallel the meridians converge the meridians and parallels intersect at right angles so let's see what happens then when we project to a common map projection that you've probably encountered before uh, in schoolrooms for years um, this is the famous Mercator projection. Uh, the Mercator projection was developed in the mid-16th century, about 1569 to be specific, and it was created as a navigation guide. It didn't look quite this neat at the time, but this is essentially how it's laid out. And I want you to notice what is preserved in here and what's lost on here. So what should be obvious is that the continents look a little off. Um, and that's because there's a distortion in the size. Antarctica here looks a little too large. And if you know anything about the geography of the Earth, you'll also notice Greenland, for example, looks a really oversized here. In fact, I want you to pay attention to the difference between Greenland over here and Australia over here. In reality, Australia is considerably larger than Greenland. If we look at the relationship between Africa and Greenland, Greenland looks slightly larger on this map. Africa is actually 14 times larger than Greenland in reality. Looking at Antarctica, it kind of looks like the blob ready to eat the world. In fact, Antarctica is around the size of the continental U.S. and Mexico combined and yet here it looks larger than all of the other continents combined. So there's some serious distortion happening um, on this map and if you notice it's happening mostly toward the northern latitudes right as we approach the poles. And Why is that? Well what this map does do correctly is that it maintains the angles at the, for the intersections between 
lines of latitude and the meridians of longitude so that there's always a right angle where they intersect, which is true. That's also how it works on the globe. But in order to maintain that relationship on a flat piece of paper like this, you have to create this distortion. And what happens is where the lines of longitude should begin to converge, get closer together as they approach the poles, here they're essentially held apart. And what that does is it creates a distortion of size on this particular map so that, in fact, as you approach the poles, whether north or south, you'll see that the distortion gets that much worse. So that, in fact, when you approach the actual poles, uh, again, mathematically, it almost approaches an infinite size. So there's some serious distortion happening here. But this map actually served a really valuable purpose at the time because it preserved the general shape of the continents to make them somewhat recognizable, even though they were off size, and also because it maintained the angles and how the uh, lines of latitude and the meridians of longitude intersected, this allows you to calculate, uh, or rather measure, uh, direction on this uh, map fairly accurately, um, well, at least for the time. And this was important for navigation at sea in the 16th century. Uh, but again, the point here being that we get the convenience of a flat map uh, and other qualities, but we see some serious distortion happening to our map here. Another way to demonstrate the distortion is to look at this index here, Tissot's ind index actually. Um, these circles on the map, these red circles, are actually all the same size. They're exactly the same size and the difference that you see is actually a function of the distortion that's happening in the map. So it just kind of reemphasizes the point that the distortion uh, worsens as you approach the poles. Uh, and this is directly a result of the way that the projection was constructed. So projections can be done in many different ways, um, actually thousands of different ways. In fact, there have been thousands of different ways of doing projections, um, and they're all they're mathematical constructs. So they they're only limited by you know numbers. Um, but in general, the types of distortion that happen on maps kind of fall into four categories. Um, generally, distortions can happen along the issues of area, meaning the sizes are distorted uh, of the continents. Uh, the shapes of the continents can be distorted, and distances and directions can be distorted as well. The two big ones, though, are area and shape. Those two uh, tend to kind of be mutually exclusive, so if you preserve one, you, you sort of lose the other.